Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And today I'm back at my door in Floyd County, Virginia, which is in the Appalachian Mountains. And here in the Appalachian Mountains, we got a lot of trees. And among these trees, we have maples. And earlier this year, I showed you how to identify silver maple, red maple, sugar maple, and some other maples by looking at their leaves. Well, right now, the leaves are not on the trees. Everything has gone dormant, but I wanted to remind you guys about maple syrup making is going to come up before we know it. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And here's to make this invasive. It's exotic. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Oh produce seed pollen and it's and you can see that here in the mountains it's two o'clock in the afternoon but look how long those shadows are and that shows you why we have winter because the sun is incident angle on the planet earth in this location is very very low so it's slow to heat up but the days are actually getting longer already here if we compared the shadows to some of my friends in Africa or India living on the equator, there would hardly be a shadow at all and the sun would still be almost overhead. So what's going on with these maple trees behind me right now? Well, they're pretty much dormant. All summer long, the trees were full of leaves and they did photosynthesis and they made sugars. And some of those sugars went into making wood and bark and leaves and in growth of the tree itself and others of that sugar has been stored in the fall the stored sugar would be t taken from those leaves and sent down the tree into the roots and that's where it stays right now but when spring comes the tree needs to get started with photosynthesis but if you look up in the tree there's no leaves there's no green there's no photosynthesis going to happen so they have to make new leaves. And where do they get the energy and the building materials to make those leaves from? From the sugar that's stored down in these tap roots right here of this tree. So what we're going to do this spring is we're going to tap that and take advantage of those sugars. And this is an age-old tradition. The indigenous peoples of the Americas would tap these trees to make sugar early settlers would do it. In Vermont, it's a thriving industry. So it's interesting to think about this as a green industry and a sustainable a way to sustain mature forests. For the early settlers in the Appalachian Mountains, getting sugar was something that was pretty difficult to do. So one of the ways they made it was from sorghum and they made sorghum molasses, and that's another story in itself, but they also tap trees like they do in the New England states. So today's video is a reminder to check out your maple trees and get them located if you haven't done that already. If you haven't done it, you can learn to identify the trees by looking at their bark, which is kind of tricky, but you can also kick up the snow like this and find the leaves and look for the key maple leaf identification. Some people get very good at identifying trees by their bark and it takes a little bit of practice. In this part of the video, I don't want you to actually learn the, to identify the trees just by these pictures alone, but to appreciate how different they are. And as you observe and look in nature, to be a better observer and look at the differences, the diversity in living things. And here we're looking at the differences in diversity and variety and the bark of different trees. And it's best if you want to learn how to do this, to do it in the summertime where you have the uh, twigs, buds, and leaves to help in identify the different trees. The other thing you'll need is a drill and some kind of tap. And I bought a kit online and here's my tap. And I will be drilling the tree this spring and we'll talk about where to drill, how deep to drill, 
how many taps you can put it in a tree, which tea, trees will be good for tapping. But you need to get that equipment now so it'll be ready to go in the springtime. And when I say spring, I really mean February. And for a lot of tappers, Valentine's Day is usually a time they start tapping the trees. I'm not advocating any particular company. I like these old traditional kind of tin looking cans to tap my trees with, but there's a lot of modern ways to do it with plastic pipes and tubes. I'm also collecting gallon milk jugs and washing them out, and I'm gonna use that to store sap until we're ready to boil it. So just a reminder, I'm gonna do a series on how to make your own maple syrup and how to tap trees and how to boil down the sap. And when, when you know it'll be ready, it's the most amazing, beautiful, magical thing to have your own maple syrup. And I promise it'll be the best maple syrup you ever had in your life. A lot of the pancake syrups today aren't even called maple syrup because they don't have any maple syrup in them. They're called pancake syrup because they're made with artificial flavors, colors, and corn syrup. But you're gonna make your own maple syrup the real deal. So get your equipment together now and I'm gonna keep a watch on the movement uh, sap and you'll need to kind of keep an eye on it in your area and we'll talk about that some more in a oh, probably not much more than a month and a half so take care thank you for watching nature at your door share with your friends and teachers new episodes every week thanks for watching